Ferentia pauses upon hearing this statement from Perez. She then bites her lips and says, Sure, Perez, that should definitely be up to you. Even the Empress can't make you enroll in the Academy by force. Enrolling in the Academy must be done voluntarily by the student. This rule was made so that anyone pushed out of the airship wouldn't be sent to the Academy by force, as if they were being sent to prison. That's why she's going out of her way to convince you. Perez states to Ferentia that he guesses it doesn't matter then. He adds that as long as they don't drag him to the Academy, he won't be enrolling there. As Ferentia is laughing, she starts thinking about how she definitely trusts Perez. However, it's not like him to be this stubborn about something. She also wonders what's gotten into him. Ferentia further realizes that she knows something perfect for a time like this. Ferentia then rustles through her things and gives Perez a box. Perez asks her what it is. As Ferentia is taking a sip of her tea, she tells him that she found it on the street on her way here. Perez questions her for more clarification. Ferentia clarifies that he should just open it and take a look. Perez decides to listen to Ferentia and opens the box. Upon opening it, he realizes that it's a diamond brooch and confirms with Ferentia. Ferentia asks him if he likes it and why is he just staring at it. Perez mentions to her that it's brilliant. Ferentia adds that she had it custom-made for him. This statement makes Perez blurt out that he loves it. This makes Ferentia chuckle. She further states to Perez that he should try it on so that she can see if it looks good on him. Perez is hesitant at first, but then listens to Ferentia and puts it on. Once it's on Perez's collar, he starts to feel embarrassed. Meanwhile, the maid and butler are amazed to see it on him. Ferentia also starts to think about how it was definitely worth having it custom-made for Perez. Ferentia then tells Perez that she knew it'd look great on him. Upon hearing this statement, Perez shyly thanks Ferentia. He adds that, however, this looks incredibly expensive. Ferentia mentions to Perez that it was a little bit expensive. She also starts to think about how it wasn't a little bit of course. We further learn that it would have cost at least a few hundred golds if anyone tried to buy this brooch outright. Diamonds are so popular that it's nearly impossible to buy one anyway, and it's more expensive than before. Ferentia then mentions to Perez that he should wear it whenever he wants to look cool. She adds that she's sure it'll work on any occasion. Perez states to Ferentia that he will wear it on a special day. Ferentia agrees with Perez and starts thinking about how it's his, so he can do whatever he wants. Suddenly, the emperor notices Ferentia and Perez together. Upon noticing them, the emperor tells Perez that he had no idea that he had another guest. Ferentia also realizes that the emperor is with the empress and Astana. As Astana is pouting, she starts to wonder about if he's 15 now. She also believes that he's looking more like Astana, the first prince now. Ferentia then bows and greets the emperor and empress. The emperor mentions to Ferentia that he was wondering who was here. He adds that it's been a while since he last saw her, and he thinks it was when her father received an order of merit. Ferentia states to the emperor that she's honored that he remembered such a trivial matter like their last encounter. She also starts thinking about how he's an annoying piece of trash who weighs between his children for his own benefit. Ferentia further decides that she should still be respectful to him since he's the ruler of this empire. As the emperor is laughing, he then tells Ferentia that she definitely has a way with her words. Ferentia thanks the emperor for his compliment upon hearing this statement. Ferentia also decides that the point is to be respectful and cute. However, she must come off confident at the same time since she's a Lombardi, after all. The emperor then turns towards Lavini and mentions to her that this is the best place in the palace to have tea. He also questions her about how about if they join them here. Lavini agrees with the emperor. She also silently stares at Perez. Perez stares back at her with his red eyes. We then see the next scene where there are a lot of desserts on the table. The emperor also laughs and asks everyone if the tea tastes even better in this cordial mood. Upon hearing this question, no one replies to the emperor, and everyone just sips their tea silently. Ferentia also starts to wonder about who arranged the seats. She can't believe that the emperor's able to be so comfortable and relaxed in this atmosphere. She further believes that he has no concern for anyone else and that he only cares about himself. All of a sudden, Ferentia notices that Astana is staring at her. Upon noticing this, she starts to wonder why he keeps looking at her like that. As she's grumbling, 
she starts thinking about how this is so awkward and that she just wants to go home. She also believes that she should have just stayed at the Foylock Palace. The Emperor then questions Ferentia about how her father's health is now and if he's completely well. Ferentia replies, Yes, Your Majesty. The medicines worked quite well. He's fully recovered without any side effects. Lavini states to Ferentia that this is a relief to hear. Upon hearing this statement, Ferentia doesn't believe Lavini one bit since she knows she was eyeing her dad's clothing business. Lavini then puts her teacup down and calls out to Perez. Perez asks her what is it. As she's smiling at Perez, she tells him that it'd be great if he greets guests at the Foylac Palace from now on. She also confirms with him about if that's him space. This confirmation makes Ferentia confused, and she starts to wonder why Perez should do this. She is also aware that her and Astana go around wherever they please. Ferentia further starts thinking about how she was planning on sitting here quietly while drinking her tea, but she just can't watch anymore. Ferentia then says, This is all my fault, Your Majesty. I'm the one who begged Prince Perez to show me this garden I've been wanting to see so badly. I'm the one you should discipline. Lavini clears her throat and mentions to Ferentia that she's willing to let it slide this time. However, Ferentia interrupts her and states she was told that once invited to the palace, they can go anywhere they please. She adds that she guesses she was wrong. She also apologizes to Lavini. Ferentia further starts thinking about how she's aware that everyone knows the garden's free for all to use in the palace. She knows that it's obvious that the Empress is making a ridiculous claim too. She also believes that what the Emperor could say in a situation is already set. The Emperor then states to Ferentia that she wasn't wrong. He adds that it's true that anyone can go in and out of this garden. Upon hearing this statement, as Ferentia is beaming with happiness, she confirms with the Emperor about if this is true and if she can visit this garden whenever she's at the palace. The Emperor nods in agreement. Ferentia tells the Emperor that this makes her so happy and is amazed by his agreement. She also turns to look at Perez and mentions to him that she gets to look around the garden from now on. She further questions him about if this is nice. Perez nods in agreement and thanks the Emperor. Ferentia then glances at Lavini and starts thinking about how she's sure that she's got noting to say, since the Emperor said it's fine. Meanwhile, the Emperor takes a gaze at Ferentia as she's sipping her tea. He then grins and says, Girls are definitely different than boys. What do you think about becoming my daughter, Ferentia? Upon hearing this question, it shocks and confuses Ferentia. Ferentia starts to wonder what the Emperor just said. She also starts to think about the Pellet Corporation and the mine, and wonders if he has any idea how much fun she's having right now. Ferentia then smiles and replies, I'm not sure about my father, but you might have to fight my grandfather about this. Would that be all right with you? He completely adores me. Upon hearing this statement, the emperor asks her for more clarification. As he's laughing, he says, You're quite witty. Yes, it's obvious how much the head of the Lombardus love you from that high-quality diamond. Everyone's been wanting to get their hands on a diamond these days. It's impossible to get even just a small one. Look at that diamond hairpin he bought for his granddaughter. It's incredible. Upon hearing this statement, Ferentia starts thinking about how he's fiercely greedy. She is aware that she's already sent him a diamond at least twice this size. On top of that, she knows he sent someone in secret to buy more accessories who bought a whole set. Ferentia is also aware that the emperor was born as a crown prince who already had everything he wanted even before he became the emperor and believes that he's still so greedy. She further guesses that this is pretty amazing in its own way. As Ferentia is fidgeting with her diamond hairpin, she tells the emperor that she's embarrassed to tell him that this isn't from her grandfather. The emperor is shocked upon hearing this statement and questions her about if it's from her father then. Ferentia disagrees and mentions to him that it's from Clarivan. The emperor understands and confirms with Ferentia if she's talking about Clarivan Pellet from the Pellet Corporation. He also asks her if he's still teaching her things after he left the house of Lombardi. Ferentia states to the emperor that he is. The emperor tells Ferentia that he can see how much he cherishes her as a student. He adds that he must be incredibly busy, yet he still takes good care of her. Ferentia mentions to the emperor that he does take good care of her, so she's been watching and learning many things from him. The emperor agrees with Ferentia and states that this is the best way to learn. 
Meanwhile, Lavini and Astana are silent as they're drinking their tea. Suddenly, Astana notices a box and questions Perez about what it is. This question causes Perez to spring up. As he's replying to Astana, he opens the box and realizes that it's a diamond brooch. Astana is amazed to see it and couldn't believe the size of it. All of a sudden, Perez snatches it out of Astana's hands. This action angers Astana. As he's stumbling while getting up, he asks Perez about how could he have something like that. Upon hearing this question, Ferentia responds, I gave him that brooch as a gift. Prince Perez, they seem to be very interested in seeing my gift to you. Why don't you give them a better look? As Ferentia continues to stare at Perez, she also wonders what he's waiting for, as this is his chance to brag. Perez then takes a deep breath and shows them the diamond. All of them are amazed upon seeing it. Ferentia also notices that greed and jealousy are oozing out of their pores. The emperor then slowly turns towards Ferentia and tells Perez that he's got a great friend. Ferentia mentions to the emperor that he's too kind. We further learn that the empress and Astan don't own any diamonds yet. The Anginasis put in several orders, but Ferentia kindly moved them to be the last on the list herself. So, unless they pay other nobles extra to buy their diamonds, they won't get their hands on one until much, much later. Ferentia is aware that if things happened according to the original plot, then the Rira mine would have gone to the Anginus family, and that diamond would have also gone to the Empress and Astana. Ferentia also knows that it's all hers now. She's further dying to them this. You don't have something like this in your house, do you? We then switch to the next scene, where we see Clarivan mentioning to Ferentia that he's been siphoning off a pretty big amount of money. He adds that it's strange how he was never caught. Meanwhile, Ferentia is thinking about how she asked Clarivan to dig around Vestian after the banquet, but she didn't think he'd find out this fast. Ferentia then confirms with Clarivan about if it's that much. Clarivan confirms with Ferentia and states that someone could have found these irregularities if they looked into it closely, but he's sure no one thought of suspecting Vestian Schultz. Upon hearing this confirmation, Ferentia knows that this is because he's the son-in-law of the Lombardus after all. She also wonders who would have guessed that a member of the family was taking the Lombardi assets. Clarivan then slides a paper to Ferentia and tells her that besides, only those who are in the inner circle would be puzzled by this. He adds that it appear from the outside that there isn't any problem. Upon hearing this statement, Ferentia realizes that Vestian has been married to a Lombardi for 16 years. She also starts to wonder about how much has he been stealing from them during this entire time. Ferentia further shakes her head and decides that she doesn't even want to think about it. Clarivan then mentions to Ferentia that Vestian said he'd like to come see him. This statement surprises Ferentia. Clarivan adds that he said there's something he wants to discuss. Ferentia questions Clarivan about if he thinks Vestian found out that he's on to him. Clarivan shakes his head in disagreement and states that he asked him in person one the day of the banquet, so he doesn't think so. This disagreement makes Ferentia start thinking. She starts to believe that Vestian is planning something and wonders what it is. She knows that the Rira mine was supposed to go to the Anginus, but they took it from them. Ferentia further believes that she can guess what's on his mind. Ferentia then asks Clarivan about if he's trying to get into real estate. She also questions him about if Vestian purchased any new homes lately. As Clarivan is about to take a sip of his tea, he tells Ferentia that there's a house that was transferred from the Lombardus to Vestian about half a year ago. He adds that it's a little odd that there isn't any proper paperwork about the process. This statement makes Ferentia realize that this house must be the one that Vestian gave to Maria. Ferentia then mentions to Clarivan that this isn't possible unless someone in charge of real estate for the Lombardus was involved. She also asks him who could it possibly be. Suddenly, Ferentia gasps as she believes that this person could be Visa. As Ferentia clenches her hand, she adds that if it's someone who knew what Vestian was up to but didn't report it, it must have been Visa. She further wonders how Visa could dare to do this. Ferentia then starts to get angry. She starts thinking about how she thought he would at least cherish his own family's assets. Ferentia also wonders if he knows about Vestian's infidelity too. Clarivan then nods in agreement and states that someone like Viesa would do even worse things if it benefited him. Ferentia gets annoyed upon hearing this statement and mumbles that he never changed. Like father, like son. 
Clarivan questions Ferentia for an explanation. However, Ferentia brushes him off and tells him that it's nothing. She adds that he should go ahead and meet Vestian as she wants to see what he has to say. Clarivan agrees with Ferentia and mentions to her that he understands. We then transition to the next scene where we see someone knocking on Clarivan's office door. The servant also tells Clarivan that he has a guest. This makes Clarivan pause. He then states to the servant to send them in. Once Vestian walks into the room, Clarivan welcomes Vestian. Vestian also tells Clarivan that it's been some time. He adds that he should have made time for him long ago. Upon hearing this statement, Clarivan starts thinking about how he came running just a few hours after his response, yet he's acting as if he's doing him a favor. Clarivan then requests Vestian to come this way to sit on the couches. Once they are sitting on the couches, Clarivan guesses that Vestian hasn't caught on yet. He also wonders if he should feel relieved. Clarivan then mentions to Vestian that even if he came, he couldn't have seen him. This statement makes Vestian pause from sipping his tea. Clarivan adds that he would have been too busy to talk to him. Vestian is silent at first. He then snaps and attempts to ask Clarivan what he just said. However, Clarivan interrupts Vestian and questions him about what brings him here today. Upon hearing this question, Vestian flinches and starts thinking about how Clarivan was once a mere employee of the Lombardus. He also can't believe that Clarivan's acting so arrogant in front of him. Vestian is further aware that he's the one who needs his help now. Vestian then clears his throat and says, I decided to visit you today about someone I saw at the banquet. There was someone who didn't seem to have anything to do with the Pellet Corporation. Clarivan asks Vestian if he means Maria Patron. Clarivan also starts thinking about how it's just as Ferentia said, and that she knew exactly what was on Vestian's mind. Vestian then puts his hand on his face and questions Clarivan about how long has he known. Clarivan states to Vestian that he doesn't think that's what's important right now. Vestian tells Clarivan that then he will ask him again and asks him about just what was he thinking. He also questions him about if he was trying to make Shannonette ill by shocking her. Upon hearing these questions, Clarivan starts thinking about how Vestian was the one who's cheating on his wife. He also couldn't believe that he's using her well-being as an excuse to criticize him. Clarivan then replies, I just thought it'd be a nice gesture on my part. I figured she'd probably want to see the banquet too. She just got here from the Shoals territory. I'm sure it's been difficult for her to make friends. This response makes Vestian flinch. He also starts to realize that Clarivan knows a lot more about Maria than he thought and wonders how. As Clarivan puts his teacup down, he adds that having attended the Banquet of Century should help her with that aspect quite a bit. Meanwhile, Vestian starts thinking about how Clarivan sounds prideful and realizes that he's right. He is aware that Maria did say she was acquainted with the daughters of the high nobles from the banquet, which led her to be in a somewhat of a stable position in their social world. Clarivan then mentions to Vestian that he thought he was here to thank him. This statement makes Vestian gulp. He also starts thinking about how maybe Clarivan invited Maria just as a friendly gesture. He also believes that he doesn't seem to be critical of his relationship with her. Vestian then asks Clarivan about if he just sent an invitation to Maria just to be nice to her. Clarivan nods in agreement and responds, I've seen and learned a lot of things from my years of working for the Lombardus. To tell you the truth, I think even more highly of you ever since I found out about you and Lady Maria Patron. Upon hearing this response, Vestian questions Clarivan for more clarification. Clarivan clarifies that to summarize, he guesses he found it well-deserving. This clarification makes Vestian smirk. He also starts to believe that he knew it that Clarivan must be tired of the Lombardus too. Vestian then states to Clarivan that they're definitely hard to stomach after a while. He also asks him about if this is why he broke away from them. Clarivan nods in agreement and tells Vestian that he guesses he can say that. Vestian laughs and mentions to Clarivan that it was truly a wise decision and that he's almost jealous. He adds that he's a man of great talent and that he recognized it from the Rira mine deal too. Vestian also states to Clarivan that this makes things easier to move along. He further tells him that he plans to claim his independence from the Lombardus soon as well and that he was hoping he'd help him. Upon hearing this statement, Clarivan asks Vestian for an explanation. Vestian explains that he will return to Schultz after separating from them. He adds that he's so sick and tired of the Lombardus already. 
Clarivan mentions to Vestian that it won't be easy to divorce a Lombardi without a legitimate reason. He adds that he's sure that he will have to pay a huge amount for alimony. Vestian replies, Oh, I've already thought of a plan. With all the mental suffering I've endured from dealing with them, they're the ones who should be paying me. Anyway, you don't need to worry about me. Upon hearing this response, Clarivan starts to wonder about why should he worry about a shameless cheater like him. Clarivan then questions Vestian about what does he need his help with. Vestian states to Clarivan that it's about the Rira mine. He also suggests that he should give the mining rights to the Schultzes. This suggestion surprises Clarivan. He also realizes that Ferentia is always right and that she's the hope and light of the Lombardus. Clarivan further decides that he will follow her forever. Clarivan then nods in agreement and tells Vestian that he will need to give it some thought. Vestian requests Clarivan to take his time and that he can trust the Schultz. However, Clarivan interrupts him and says, All I mean is that it's too big of a matter for me to decide on the spot now. Why don't we meet again in a few days? I think I can give you a clearer answer then. Clarivan also starts thinking about how he needs to ask for Ferentia's intention about this. Vestian then nods in agreement and mentions to Clarivan that he understands. He adds that he hopes he will carefully consider his offer. We then switch to the next scene where we see Vestian throwing his blazer on a chair and is very angry. He also starts thinking about how Clarivan is definitely not easy to deal with. Vestian further believes that he needs the mining rights to the diamonds for him to leave this wretched place. Shannonette then creaks into the room and asks Vestian about when did he come home. Shannonette also starts to approach Vestian. As Vestian is turning around, he starts to feel even more annoyed. He then calls out to Shannonette and states that he didn't know she was here. Shannonette tells him that they need to talk. This statement makes Vestian flinch. As both of them are sitting down, we learn that this has been going on for the past several months. Shannonette started to ask him about the nights he spent away from home and questioned him about why he was spending so much time with her brother Vis. She started giving her opinions about the Lombardi's mining business too, even though it had always been Vestian's domain. Vestian wonders when did Shannonette start getting like this. He then realizes that it was right after Maria left Schultz and moved closer to here. He further wonders if she knows anything about them. Vestian then smiles and questions Shannonette about what is it this time. He adds that if it's about him not coming home yesterday, he was busy with something. Suddenly, Shannonette interrupts Vestian by slamming some books on the table. This action shocks Vestian. Vestian then asks Shannonette about why did she bring the transaction records from their mining business. As he's quivering, he also starts to wonder about how did she get her hands on them and if she looked through them already. Vestian further believes that if that's the case, then Shannonette must have seen traces of money being siphoned away from the Lombardus. Shannonette then apologizes to her husband for not asking for his consent before getting involved in his work. She adds that she understands this might upset him, but she had to see it for herself. We further learn that ever since the day Shannonette overheard her husband's conversation with the head of the Durak Guild, she's never had a single peaceful moment in her heart. It became worse after hearing the news that the Lombardus failed to win the Rira mine at the auction. Had it not been for the Pellet Corporation's unexpected involvement, all of the iron buried in the mine would have gone to the Anginasis as promised. Shannonette had to accept it that her husband is helping an enemy family of the Lombardus. She has been digging up what he's been after, and these records are the results of her investigation. Shannonette then questions Vestian about if he can explain what's going on here. She also starts to think about how maybe Vestian had a reason he couldn't tell her, and that maybe it's something she can understand if she hears it. Meanwhile, as Vestian is looking through the records, he mentions to Shannonette that these are confidential records. He adds that she shouldn't have had access to these without his consent. All of a sudden, Vestian realizes how Shannonette gained access to these records. He also puts his hand on his face and states to Shannonette that she is a Lombardi herself. Vestian further starts to grind his teeth and starts thinking about how he's aware that the direct family members of the Lombardus reserve the right to be involved in the family business whenever they wish, but anyone who becomes a Lombardi by marriage can't exercise the same right. Vestian then asks Shannonette about what is it that she wants to tell him. Shannonette responds, How could you be so confident right now? It looks like you've been taking away a huge amount of money from my family this whole time. It's all right here, but how could you still? 
Upon hearing this response, Vestian tells Shannonette that he did it for them. Shannonette asks him for an explanation. As Vestian is thinking of an excuse, he realizes that it's not over yet and believes that he still has a way out of this, which is by using Shannonette's heart. Vestian then mentions to Shannonette to just hear him out. He adds that it's all because he loves her so much. Please make sure to subscribe. Special thanks to all of my Patreon members. Why not watch another manhole recap on my channel by clicking on this video right here?